Okay, so one of the things we need for the 10 assignment for Term 2 is to import PDFs into Sibelius. So when you first go to Sibelius, you'll notice this Import menu. And here is this program which is bundled with Sibelius called Photoscore. Students will have the version Photoscore Lite, which has a few fewer features than the full version that I own. Once you open the program, you simply choose Open PDF browse to the folder that you want to use and open the file. Then I normally would choose high resolution. You want to check the file. If I pop into downloads and have a look at this file, you'll notice it's got a cover page which I don't want to use but otherwise it's looking pretty good. So I'll just choose pages 2 to 10 so that I don't need the first page. And I've already done this as you can see here in class. Um, but I'm just going to do it again. It takes several minutes for this stage to work, but eventually you see a page like this, which has got this detail view that floats around. It's got a keypad like Sibelius. It's got the original print at the top and the sort of scanned version down the bottom. So the trick is to scroll through and check how well the program has worked. Yours won't put in guitar tabs like this and neither will it put in lyrics, song lyrics, but you can add the guitar chords yourself later. It will however normally get all of the notes and rhythm. So if I scroll down I'll see that there's this red bit here and that's telling me there's a mistake in the scan and in fact there's a bad timing list over here. So basically you look at this and you compare it and if I hover over this note in the detail view I can see it's supposed to be a quaver but it's actually a crotchet so I need to change it by changing the rhythm. And that one's wrong as well, isn't it? Look, there's that one's a crotchet and it should be a quaver. So you basically just have to go through and fix them until the reds go away. This bar's got a particularly tricky problem. Have a look here. This note here with the stem down is green. It's in voice two. And it's tied to a blue note. So the reason why that bar's showing as if it's got four extra counts, plus four over there, is because this one here should be in voice 2. So once you've made the right decisions the red dotted lines will go away and you'll know that you've fixed the thing and then you can just look for the next mistake. So you, you work through the pages of the score gradually fixing things until it's more or less fixed but you can always fix them in Sibelius as well. So then you say send to Sibelius. If that's not there save as music XML will also work. Either, either of those is fine. And it'll remind you that you haven't fixed ev everything. You can fix them here, but most of the time I find just fixing the rhythms and notes in this program is not too time consuming. I spend about 10 minutes in class fixing this one. And I always just don't change anything here. I just let Sibelius choose the instruments. And then it just opens as a Sibelius file, which is called transfer. That's what you might call your reference score. So give it a name that can make sense, yeah? And pop it into your proper location. There's the one I made early. And so you can look at it in print view, and you can look at it in sideways landscape view. You'll notice there's lots, there's lots and bits and pieces of stuff that you don't want, yeah? So if you can't see all that rubbish, <laughs> that's sort of a good thing, but I've got hidden objects on um, because I like to know what's going on here. Yeah? So when you look at something like this on page one, can you see there's all sorts of silly little things that are just floating about that really we don't need, yeah? So there's a bit of tidying up to do. The first couple of weeks of the assignment is tidying up the score. Don't worry about these red notes that'll all sort itself out. So I recommend you have a paper copy of it next to you so that you can check things out. But this is not our backing track score. What we need to do is have another score that is that we've set up ourselves. So we want to make a new score and we want to choose the instruments that we're going to use. So to start with I suggest just choosing the instruments that are already there like the solo instrument, which in my case is violin, to play the melody, and say a piano to play the other parts. I suggest that a good idea would be to paste the piano part in, 
basically as it is. So how am I doing that, you might ask, yeah? I'm doing a triple click to get the whole lot. So here's my, here's my file, and I'm triple clicking to get the entire thing, and then Control c for copy. And then I'm going back to my real score and pasting it in. Now, you know, as well as I do, that the violin solo line will be performed, yeah? And obviously, you're not going to have the piano part in your final version because we're orchestrating this piano part. So we're turning it from a piano part into an orchestra. To start with, I've only got strings here, but I might add flute, harp, tuba, timpani, who knows what I might add later. But I just want to have the piano part in here so I can actually hear it, yeah? But gradually, you start to move things out of the piano part into the rest of the orchestra. So, a, so that's the subject of our next lesson, or two or three. Concept one, import the score into Photoscore and fix the mistakes. Then export to some sort of file that um, Sibelius can read, either this one or this one is fine. And then open it up in Sibelius and, ha and start a new completely blank file that's your assignment. One last hint, this piece was originally in C major, so I didn't have to add a, t a key signature in. But if I did need a key signature, it's in the notations menu. So you just put the same key signature in as whatever the original music has. So your goal for the first week or two is to make this file perfectly neat and look exactly like the printed music. And I say look exactly like it, I mean it has all of the notes and all of the chords accurately. If you're not going to sing, then you probably don't need the words because you can read from the original music. But I find the words just uh, it make it easy to um, keep track of where you're up to. And the last thing you want to do, I'm just pressing the end, so I can go right to the end, is know how long it is. So you'll remember that Sibelius defaults to 120, uh, to 100, and this this has got a little bit of a mistake in it, as you can see. What we need here is the crotchet, wherever that is. Crotchet equals 120. So at this speed, this piece lasts for four minutes, yeah? And we want two to three minutes, so it's much too long. And how did I get that little doobie thing here? It's in the play time, video time code. Duration at end of score. I just checked that box. You've got to put that in. I know that I need to make this shorter. I might need to take out one of the choruses or the verses, but that's for, for another time. The goal for the first week is to just get it imported into Photoscore, get rid of most of the mistakes, save it into Sibelius, and just tidy it up. Get rid of the junk, yeah? I can see junk everywhere on this part. And then I'll check it, yeah? And once I say that it's ready, then we'll move on to the next decision. So we're not really ready for this part yet. I just wanted to show you where we're going in the long run.